Um, so, okay, so this first um, theorem that I'm going to talk about, this is really a, a case of a more general Lucas approximation theorem. Um, so what he says is that suppose you have some um, tower of covers. Let's write it like this. And this is a co-final tower of regular finite covers. Of M, um, then what you have here is that the limit as um, I goes to infinity of the first bedding numbers of these uh, manifolds with respect to the degree of the cover. Oh, maybe I didn't say what this means. Uh, well, let's say that these gammas are the fundamental group. Um, then in this case, then this actually goes to um, the first L2 Betty number of M. And in these cases, we actually get that this is zero. Okay, so this is the first L2 Betty number. Um, and in this case, this is due to results of lots together with Luke that you get zero. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, whether or not the first body number grows in this towers of uh, finite covers, um, it, the limit goes to zero, um, but it is a, a consequence, um, or, or what I was gonna say. I think it, it is known for um, these manifolds that the virtual first body number is infinity, um, so we know that it is going to zero, uh, but Luke's result is sort of telling us that, well, it's going to see, it's, sorry, it's going to infinity, um, but it's going to infinity very slow with respect to the degree of the cover. Okay. So, um, okay, so that's great. So we sort of have an idea of how the first body number grows in these covers. So we can ask also a question like, what about um, the torsion part of homology? So here is a conjecture. So unfortunately, we don't have a theorem like this for torsion, um, but we do have this conjecture, which um, in an also a more general case is due to Bergeron um, and Venkatesh. There's also uh, versions of it due to Luke. Um, but the particular version that I'm gonna be stating here uh, was, um, conjecture by Tang Le, okay? And what this conjecture says is that there exists, there exists a co-final um, tower of regular finite covers. Um, such that If you look at, again, we're looking at this limit, but now let's look at the log of the size of the torsion group. Um, over the degree of the cover. And that this should go to the volume of M over six pi, okay? And let me say here that the volume of M, you take it to be the sum of the volumes of the hyperbolic pieces. Okay. Um, and when Tang Le stated this conjecture, um, in well, in that paper, what he actually did is he showed, let me say here, so he showed um, that um, he doesn't show he doesn't show the conjecture. So she don't, he doesn't show this equality, but he shows that um, this less than or equal to holds. So he sort of shows that this volume of m over six pi is actually a um, upper bound for this limit. 
okay? So we don't know whether this, con or we, don't, uh, we don't have this conjecture yet, it's just a conjecture, but um, maybe we can ask actually an even easier question. So an even easier question. that we can ask, and this is, uh, does there exist a finite cover such that the torsion subgroup is actually non-trivial? Okay, so we don't even, um, okay, I guess we, we do know this question now, but this is a much simpler question, like can you even show um, that you have non-trivial torsion in homology uh, virtually. Okay. So, um, and the answer to this question is actually yes. So let's talk about this answer. So the first result um, answering this question is due to Hong Bing Soon in 2015. And in 2015, he looked at just the case of M being a closed hyperbolic manifold. So if M is a closed hyperbolic manifold, uh, then he does get that you have non-trivial torsion in homology. And I'll talk a little bit more about like what his result actually is saying. So let me make a comment here more later on what his result is actually saying. Okay, and then uh, in 2017, there were two independent papers with, that were posted actually within a week of each other on archive, uh, but one of them is Du Tulio, and he says that in this more general case that we're considering, so we can, again, remember we're considering this, um, this compact three manifolds with enteritoroidal boundary that are not graph manifolds, then he says um, that, yeah, this holds, um, and it says yes, with this cover. So what he's saying is that you can find a cover that's actually regular uh, where um, the torsion of this cover is non-trivial. Is non um, and there was also independently this paper of Friedel and Herman where they show um, that yes, also, um, you, they can't guarantee that the covers are gonna be regular, but they can guarantee that the size of this torsion group is going to be as, is as large as you want. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, um, so let's, so let me tell you now a little bit more about what Sun's result is. Uh, so Sun's result. Um, so this is his theorem from 2015. Um, so if, let's say N here, so if N is a closed hyperbolic three manifold, And A is any finite abelian group then there is some finite cover such that A is a direct summons in um, the homology of this cover, okay? So the way you should think about this theorem is saying like, well, you can prescribe whatever torsion you want, uh, whatever torsion subgroup you want, and you can find a finite cover that contains uh, this group in its torsion subgroup, okay? So I want to think of this theorem as having prescribed torsion.
Um, so how does one construct torsion? How to construct torsion. Um, and let's go through this very easy example first. So if I take, um, let's say, a surface of genus G. So here's a picture of a surface of genus G. Well, in this picture, G is 2. Um, and I can find in my surface some curve C, which is non-separating. Okay. Uh, then, well, what do we know? Uh, oh, actually, let me say here, let's just recall that if we were to compute the first homology of the surface, we get C to the 2G. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along C. So I get this picture. Okay. Um, and let's make this one red. Let's make this one blue. Um, so I cut first and then I'm going to take a quotient. by 2 pi over n rotation at each, uh, let's say, of c1 and c2. So if this one's like c1, this one is c2. Um, and then I'm taking this quotient at each one of these two. Um, so what I'm left with, what I have here, let's call this xn. So this is a two-dimensional complex. Um, it's not a manifold anymore because we have this quotient. Um, and here's the, uh, here's the EC fact, or maybe let's say EC exercise that you can work out if you're bored for the rest of the talk. Uh, once, once you do this, if you compute now the homology of this complex, you'll see that what you get um, is 2g minus 1 copies of z and c mod nc. Okay, so here taking this, um, doing this cutting and taking this quotient, you'll see that you're introducing um, introducing this torsion subgroup um, that's cyclic of order n. Okay, so let me talk about what was some strategy for finding prescribed torsion in a finite cover of a closed hyperbolic three manifold. Um, and well, I'm just going to tell you basically the idea of how you can construct cyclic um, torsion in, in virtual co in covers. So first is that you're going to start with a uh, kind of Markovic surface. So if you recall, um, I think this was around 2012, Kahn and Markovic were able to construct lots and lots of almost Fuchsian surfaces. So let me say here, they constructed, constructed many almost Fuchsian surfaces. Uh, which immerse into your closed hyperbolic three manifold. So they're not embedded, but they immerse. And the way they do it is they did it by gluing many um, pairs of pants in some controlled way along the cuffs, along the cuffs of the pants. Okay, so if I drew, draw a picture here, well, their pants were very skinny pants. So let me try to draw like very skinny pants. So something like this. Um, 
and you have this in these pants you have these cuffs let's call one of this c uh, you know that this it's immersed into your three manifold um, but we could have chosen we could have constructed a kind of microwave surface in a way that c actually let's say in a way that some cuff of some pants in your surface and let's say it's c uh, maps to n times around some closed geodesic. in the hyperbolic three manifold n. Okay, so why do we want this? The reason we want this is that we wanna do this little trick that we did above. Um, and let me just show you again. We can take this surface with this um, curve C in there. Um, also, let's make sure it's non-separating and we can do this little trick. We cut and we do this uh, quotient in each of the two uh, pieces. So let's say here we can apply the same trick. Apply the trick from above. Um, and we get now um, some two complex Xn that also immerses into your three manifold n. Okay, but we have to, so he has to do this really carefully. So let me put some asterisk here. So you do this carefully. So that um, this, well, let me call this immersion I, such that, so that um, this immersion I, there's a couple of things that we need. We need it to be pi one injective. And uh, so that when you look at what happens to the fundamental group, um, the image of this fundamental group, we want it to be a quasi-convex subgroup of the fundamental group of the closed three manifold. Okay, so why is it important that we have this um, quasi-convex subgroup? Well, now what that means is that we can apply Eagle's uh, virtually special theorem. So this is a virtually special theorem in the case of this closed hyperbolic three manifolds. And one of the consequences of this is that you can find virtual retractions. So what this means is that, is that there exists a finite cover n uh, prime of n and a retraction from the fundamental group of my manifold of this cover to the fundamental, so to this quasi-convex subgroup which in this case is um, the fundamental group of this two complex. Okay, so because this is a retraction, then you can see actually, then it's also a quick exercise to see that when you look at now um, the homology of this cover, then this is actually going to contain the homology of this um, two complex plus some other stuff, which is in this case, the kernel of the, um, of this map. Okay. Okay, so this is the basic idea, but what you see is here, we have um, construct, uh, so we, can, we have constructed this two complex that we now its homology appears as a direct summand of the homology of this cover and we constructed this two complex in a way that it, in particular, it has this um, torsion that we prescribed it to have. So we prescribed it to have the C mod NC um, in there. So we constructed this torsion in homology. So that's really the idea of what he does. And then you can do some induction on, on if you want some prescribed torsion that is not cyclic. So that's really the idea. Okay. Any other questions? 
or any questions? Okay, so um, let me now state our theorem. Um, and so this is the theorem. So again, let me just remind you what the setting is. So we have M, an irreducible compact three manifold with MT or toroidal boundary. Uh, which is not a graph manifold. Okay, and we're going to let A be any finite abelian group. Then we can show that similar to Hong Bing's result, there is some finite cover of M uh, such that A, so this prescribed abelian group, finite abelian group is a direct summand in uh, homology of this cover. Okay, um, so, uh, so let me tell you a little bit about now again the strategy for proving this theorem. Um, and really the strategy sort of follows the general strategy of Hong Bing Soon, but a lot of things have to be modified because um, if you remember, oh, actually let me just go back a little bit here. Um, this all some Hong Bing strategy really started out with a kind of Markovich surface. And kind of Markovich construction only works uh, in the case of closed hyperbolic three manifolds. So it doesn't work in general. And in this general case, well, what we do know is, again, remember uh, what I said from the beginning, that M has a hyperbolic piece. Uh, and in fact, this hyperbolic piece, this is gonna be a finite volume hyperbolic three manifold. Okay, um, but if M was not closed hyperbolic to begin with, then this hyperbolic piece, oh, actually, let me just call it M H for hyperbolic. This hyperbolic piece is probably going to have cost. So this is going to be a non-closed, um, but a cost hyperbolic three manifold. And so in this case, we cannot use kind of Markovich construction. Um, however, there is a new construction due to um, due to kind of right. So let's say here, we can use uh, the new construction of lots of almost Fuchsian surfaces due to con and right. Okay, so what con and right say is that you can construct lots of what you can so let me say it like this um, you construct lots of almost Fuchsian surfaces but now here they're made from both pants and hamster wheels and the reason they call so pants let me just redraw a picture of what pair of pants looks like and hamster wheels kind of look like this which is why they call them hamster wheels uh, but what they do is they also have a very careful construction um, in which you can glue these up together to get um, almost Fuchsian surfaces that immerse in your 
finite volume hyperbolic three manifold. Um, and we can, and we're going to do a kind of similar trick. And but also here, I want to note that uh, independently from the results of Kahn and Wright, but around the same time, there was also a construction of uh, of lots of um, surfaces that immersed in cost hyperbolic three manifolds. That was due to Cooper and Fuder. However, their construction um, gives you less control on like the constants. Uh, and less control on like really what these surfaces look like. So I don't know how to use it to prove our theorem. Um, so we're going to be using Kahn and Wright's construction. But I just wanted to point that out. And then you can try to do a similar thing. Uh, so let me say here. Sorry, can I just ask a question? Yes. Uh, what is a hamster wheel? I can't, I don't know how to interpret that picture. Okay, so um, if you look at this picture here of the pair of pants, yep. um, you know you, well, this is just, you have three boundary components. Yep. But this hamster wheel, you have, this hamster wheel here, you have two like special boundary components that are on the like outer rims. Okay. And then you have some number of boundary components uh, sort of on the inside. Okay. So it's Does that make more this, sense? This is a planar surface. Yeah, it's, it's yes. just a, a more punctured, it's an annulus <laughs> yes. with more punctures and some extra sort of structure that, okay. Thanks. Yes. Okay. There's just more punctures, but there is, um, there is some structure. Um, and like, if you wanted to look at their paper, you'll see like they have some conditions of where this outer ones go and the inner ones uh, and sort of what's happening between them. So there's like a distinction between the outer boundary components and the inner ones. Okay, okay, thank you. I just wasn't sure what the intended typology was. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, all right. So we're gonna use this new construction to kind of write. And again, we're gonna uh, construct or maybe not construct, but let's say start with a canon right surface uh, such that one of the cuffs, so this cuff can be a cuff of a pair of pants or it can be a cuff of a hamster wheel, um, but we want one of the cuffs to go n times around a closed geodesic in my hyperbolic three manifold and H. And again, we're going to apply the same trick as before. Apply the same trick as before to construct an immerse two complex um, that immerses in my finite volume hyperbolic three manifold NH. And one thing to note is that because this kind of right surfaces are closed, almost Fuchsian surfaces, uh, maybe, maybe let me make that comment here. So um, actually, let me make it here. So these closed, almost Fuchsian, surface, uh, it stays far away from the cusp. It stays far away from the cusps. Okay, so this will be important later. Um, and again, because we have this, then actually this two complex Xn also stays far away or some controlled distance from uh, the cusps in my three manifold MH and my finite volume hyperbolic three manifold MH. Okay, so now again, we have to be really careful now to ensure actually more things that, uh, that we need from before. Um, so other things is we need this immersion, oh, let's call it I, we need I to be, oh, let's, um, what's the word that I wanna use? We want to ensure 
that this immersion is again pi one injective. Uh, but we're going to use the fact that this um, that this complex stays away from the cuffs to actually also ensure that um, when I look at what when I look at the image of the fundamental group of this, um, that this is a, well, this will now be a relatively quasi-convex subgroup in pi one in the fundamental group of my this hyperbolic three manifold. Um, however, I actually so I want to do it in a way that it also is and also in the fundamental group of my full three manifold M. Okay. Uh, so now again, it's going to also follow sort of in the similar strategy of Hong Bing Soon, but in this more complicated sense. So now, um, unfortunately, in this case, we don't have this virtually special theorem in the same way that we had it um, for the closed hyperbolic three manifold case. Um, so here we now have a, well, what is called, well, we have a virtually special theorem. Uh, but it's slightly weaker than the virtually special theorem that we have in the closed hyperbolic three manifold case because here we don't have compact special, we just have uh, special. So here we have a virtually special theorem. Um, and let me say here um, again, the closed case was due to Agel. Uh, the finite volume hyperbolic, oh, sorry, the uh, cost case is due to Wise. And the mixed case here, this is due to. This is key. Oh no, I don't know how to, I don't know if I'm spelling this, his name correctly, but it's Sutu Pritsitsky and Wise. So really sorry about that. I apologize if I didn't write his name correctly. Um, but we do have a virtually special theorem, which like I said, is not as strong because we no longer have virtually compact special, but this virtually special theorem does allow us in some cases to um, construct a, to find a retraction. Uh, so here we also have to, um, you know, make sure that a retraction for our particular um, subgroup does exist, but here we can also find a retraction. Uh, and again, proceed as above to get, and we can get uh, this prescribed virtual torsion uh, in, oh, let me just say, let me say prescribed torsion in the homology of a finite cover. Okay, um, so this is really the idea of just how the proof goes, and it's just to show you that really the strategy is following Humbing Soon strategy, but a lot of things are very different because now we're in a more general setting and we don't have the same type of strong results that we had for the closed hyperbolic three manifold case. Um, but things do work out and we can make it work. Um, but a couple of things that I want to point out is that um, actually, when you look at this, because you're appealing to these virtual retraction properties, you don't have control on whether these finite covers are regular. So unfortunately, this sort of um, result doesn't help us answer the conjecture that I mentioned before. So not only do we not have control about whether these covers are regular, but we also don't really have control on the uh, degree of the cover. So it's really not very helpful for the conjecture. Uh, but it does show us that we do get prescribed torsion in, in finite covers. Okay, and I'm going to end here. Okay. Um, oh, Michelle, um, are there any questions?
Oh yeah. Well, I mean, there are all sorts of questions, <laughs> but maybe I'll, I'll uh, restrain myself. First of all, I mean, I guess you lose total control of the betting numbers, right? So you can't, I don't know. I mean, what do you expect if you looked at towers of rational homology spheres? Uh, can you get prescribed torsion or there's just no hope? What, how about that? I think, I mean, with, with the way that we do it, we really have no control on the, on the degree. So I don't, I don't know how to say anything about degree. But what about, you know, you mentioned Lynn and Friedel Herman. Uh, do they have different techniques? So. Yeah, so they have some different techniques and they use the fact um, that these things, well, they they use the fact that these manifolds are virtually fibered. Yeah. So the first thing they do is then first go to a fibered cover, which as far as I know, you we also don't have very much control on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they then they say something starting from the fact that you that you have a fiber three and a half volt. So I guess there's no guess as to whether there are specific constraints for rational homology the torsion and rational homology three sphere covers, or there's just no guess now what's going on there. Yeah, I think. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, I see. Um, what about the, you've excluded graph manifolds? Has the answer known what's going on there or, or what? Um, so I think it's not known what's going on there, but the problem with graph manifolds is that they're not virtually special. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know what to do. Even in the case with non-empty boundary? The graph manifolds? Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, honestly, I feel like I mostly just know how to work with hyperbolic manifolds. So I need a hyperbolic piece yeah. myself to be able to do something. But um, I think there are, I think it is maybe known when, so some graph manifolds can be virtually special and it's, Maybe there are people out there that know when they are and when they aren't. Like sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. Um, so maybe some things can be set in that case. Um, but our technique wouldn't work because we really are like constructing things. We're constructing these almost Hoopsian surfaces inside these hyperbolic pieces. Mm -hmm. So our techniques don't work. Yeah. yeah. In the case of cipher fibered manifolds, this is probably an exercise to to figure out that I guess you're going to be very restricted what torsion you can get and how much just from counting exceptional fibers. But okay, so you're saying you probably don't get any prescribed torsion that you want in the cipher fibered case. Okay, maybe Steve will contradict me. No, well, what I'll say is that there, uh, in the closed case, uh, and say it's a rational multi three sphere, then there's a relationship between the Euler number of the cypher manifold, the order of the cone points, uh, you know, well, the other uh, multiplicities of the singular fibers and the order of the first homology. There's just some equation you write down. Now we know if we know how the Euler class or the Euler number is varies when you take covers. Um, and, uh, you know, with, that means that if you could control how the uh, multiplicities of the uh, singular fibers are varying, maybe you could get some control on at least the order of the first homology, if not the isomorphism uh, type. Yeah, yeah, well, it's just a, the computing the homology, this is an exercise in counting exceptional fibers in the closed case. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's much more interesting when you have tori in there. Uh, are, there any, are there any other, any other questions? Oh, because I think when, so in those cases, do you not have um, virtually infinite first bedding number? No. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, wait, it depends, I guess, what the base surface is. Okay. I think that would be my guess. Okay, are there any, any other questions? If not, let's thank uh, Michelle again. I apologize for my